to Mark. It's Inside Thornton, the program series that features topics of and about Thornton Township High School. Inside Thornton is a production of the Thornton Television News Service, the world's longest-running high school TV news service. And welcome to Inside Thornton. This is Greg Struess. Day before Thanksgiving, I can taste the turkey now. And uh, that's about it. Anyway, our guest today is one of the more popular teachers and people around here at Thornton. He's a person who cares. Whenever one of his students has a personal problem, he's always there. This is his 23rd year in the district and his 11th year teaching health exclusively. It is an honor to welcome Mr. Willie Brown, Jr. <laughs> Some of your loyal fans. This is your 23rd year, right? Right on. How does that feel? Well, I just feel as though I'm at a stage in my teaching career now where I'm, I'm relaxed, having a lot of fun, uh, enjoying students, and I just, this, as far as I'm concerned, Thornton's home. So and, I'm having uh, a good time. In the last 23 years, how have, uh, how have things changed as far as schools and uh, teaching? Uh, I believe that maybe there was a bit more, overall, a bit more respect for authority possibly years ago, but I don't, I think the young people today are not worse than they were. I think they're, honestly, I think they're better than they were years ago. But I think they're willing to, to challenge, they're willing to ask questions. Um, I think they're more actively involved in the, in the education thing even though you might hear contrary to that from many of my colleagues that uh, maybe schools are worse today, but I, I'm actually enjoying it better today because I think we're much more relaxed. You were Dean of Boys. At one time. What year? <laughs> I think from about 1965 until about 1970, so approximately. Uh, the bigger riots. We were talking one time about uh, when you were Dean of Boys. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what was the worst uh, incident that ever happened back then? I, I think the, probably the worst incident happened to me, not while I was dean of boys, but during a one-year interim period when I went back into teaching in the f physical education department in which we had a big blow-up here at school. And I'm not sure what caused that particular blow-up except that it was had some racial overtones to it. A group of youngsters, black youngsters, were on one end of the driveway between the gym and the field house a group of uh, white youngsters were on the other end, and they were throwing bricks and bottles at each other. And I, like an idiot at the time, stood out there in the middle of them and said, come on, stop it, stop it. Luckily, they did stop. And bricks were flying by my head. And it was, wasn't until after it was all over that I became really shook up because I realized I could have been hurt. But uh, that was probably the worst for me personally. Uh, so after 1970, you went to Thornwood? I went to Thornwood 71, 72 as an assistant principal. And while there, I just found, even though I thought administration was what I really wanted to do, I found that I had lost a lot of intimate and close contact with students, and I asked to be put back in the classroom where I've been ever since. And you've taught health? Almost exclusively. And what is health? Well, stated very simply, health is a state of well-being not necessarily the absence of disease, which is the exact definition that we use in the course that we teach. And that includes mental illness? That includes mental, physical, and social health. And what it means basically is that if you feel good most of the time, you're healthy. However, you can have a very slight illness, headache, upset stomach, an owie on your little toe, <laughs> and as long as it doesn't keep you from meeting your basic responsibilities, you're still healthy. So yeah. you're your own best doctor. You're with yourself. Uh, 24 hours a day, so you have a good rule of thumb as to whether you're a healthy person. But if you're able to, if you feel good most of the time, and if you're able to meet most of your responsibilities, you're healthy. Uh, why are teenagers today, uh, compared to back then, back in the 60s, there mm -hmm. seems to be more suicide going? And why is there more of that today than back then? Would you know that? 
Well, from some of the things that have been uh, written about the subject and some talk shows that I've listened to and some reading that I've done, it appears that with the breakdown of the family in the United States today, with where we're having almost 50% of all marriages are ending in divorce, I think that the family is on shaky ground today. And so if the family is on shaky ground, and therein is the young persons and the adults too, for that matter, your greatest stabilizing force. That's where you should receive most of your feelings of security, where you feel like you are safe and at home. And if that's crumbling, I think it's causing um, some insecurities on the part of young people. And I don't think they know themselves quite as well or are sure that there's someone there backing them up. And in addition to that, we have such a fast-moving society where maybe parents are spending too much time trying to get the dollar to live the quote-unquote dream life and not spending enough time really relating to each other and getting to know each other. For instance, in my home, it was quite common for us to spend an hour and a half sitting down having a meal, have one entree, sit and talk for a while. And lot, there were a lot of times there was no real serious conversation going on. There were times when we would really state how we felt about life through things that my parents would pick up about me and my brothers and sisters, and we would resolve a lot of problems, uh, potential problems that could probably have caused serious difficulty. Or what I could say to my dad that I felt uncomfortable about being called a fat soul, <laughs> uh, and as I've stated to some of my students, and that really hurt me at times. But my mother would s sit there and say, now, Junior, if, you're, if young people call you fat soul, and I also sometimes they call me Booty Brown, <laughs> two cats in a bag, you know, that kind of thing. It really hurt my feelings, but she said, as long as you let them know that it hurts you, human nature being what it is, they're going to tease you even more. So I started swallowing it up and laughing with people sometimes when they called me fatso. And believe it or not, what my mother said was true. People quit, when they get quit getting the fun out of it, they stop doing it. Okay. Uh... Seems like eight, seven minutes is never enough to talk to you. We're out of time now. And uh, hope you have a th good Thanksgiving. I wish and, the same for uh, you, Greg. Thank you for coming on here. My pleasure. Uh, Mr. Brown, everyone. <laughs> Pretend my clothes are on fire. Oh, oh, what do I do? What? Don't panic, Dick. You know what to do, Dick. Uh, stop, drop, and roll, Dick. Roll. And keep rolling until you roll the fire out. All out. So remember, if your clothes ever catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll, Dick, roll. <laughs> Very good, Dick. All right, we're back here at Inside Thornton, and now two attractions for the price of one. Leisha McKnight and Steve Marmick from the... Uh, Mormick? Mormick. Can't even get the name straight. From the cheerleading squad. Let's hear it for them, everyone. <laughs> so how does... Now, you're, you're a guy cheerleader, I hope, yeah? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well. how is that... How does the girls take that, that there's a guy on the cheerleading squad now? Oh, well, we like it. Uh-huh. Yeah, they... Um, Steve, he has a lot of spirit, and um, that's what we need on our team. Now, is the cheerleading squad, how long does that go to, as far as, a, is it a season, seasonal thing? Uh, football games and It's basketball. a four-year thing. Well, I mean, four years. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, yeah. like all seasons, right, you know, uh, four years. Four years. And you're the guy that does all the twirling and everything? Right. And, uh, yeah, I saw you back in the parade. What was a homecoming parade? You homecoming almost hit a car parade. one time. That's right. Yeah, that was <laughs> last you, okay, year. Okay, you got a joke you wanted to tell. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say this. How did the dead baby get across the road? How did the... Oh, okay. Don't interrupt. And if you would like to know this answer, you if you see me in the hall, just ask. That's it. Why don't you tell us? No, I don't want to tell. I don't want them to come up to me and ask. Keep them in suspense. Yeah. Okay. yeah, keep them in suspense. All right, that just about ends. This week's Inside Thornton, this is Greg Struess. We hope you, from everyone here at Inside Thornton, Thornton News Service and getting around, we hope you all have a great Thanksgiving vacation. Rest up, enjoy, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.